Welcome to The Practical Intuitive, where each Monday at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 Eastern, where host Robin Fritz explores mind, body, and spirit for the real world. Because we are all intuitives and healers, and we must all learn to love ourselves and live that love every day. Robin is a trained and certified intuitive and spiritual consultant and hypnotherapist with an international practice based in Seattle, Washington. As the practical intuitive, she covers personal and business intuition, animal communication, mediumship, space clearing, past life regression, shamanic insights, energy healing, soul choice. It's all here. Readings, healings, and funny, warm, thought-provoking conversations. It's Robin Fritz, the practical intuitive, helping you mastermind body and spirit for the real world. No ifs, ands, buts, or BS ever. Welcome to the Practical Intuitive Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World. It's Robin Fritz, and we are live in Seattle, Washington. And welcome. We're going to be talking about crystals today. If you followed my show and my Facebook Lives, you know that my business partner is a crystal. And uh, crystals are an important part of my personal and professional life. And I'm always willing to share that with listeners and with other people, writers, and crystal practitioners. So today we have a special guest, Kak Young, the author of The Art of Healing with Crystals and many other books. And so she'll be joining us in a few minutes as um, we get underway here today. But I want to remind you, as always, that my work and my show um, are both about helping us understand how we are all intuitives and healers and how we can all tap those skills in our daily life. It just depends on how willing you are to leap in, experiment, play with your natural abilities and learn and grow as time moves on. So each week on my show, I welcome callers with questions, with comments about the sh- topic of the day. Um, we'll, we also do quick live intuitive readings um, for callers, so you're welcome to call in to 202-570-7057. If you're shy, please email me your question, your comment, um, your request for a quick reading to robin at robinfritz.com. That's R-O-B-Y-N-F-R-I-T-Z dot com. Because I know sometimes you're shy, sometimes you have other things going on and you need to listen to the show in the archives and we are here to serve you. So, you know, I love every week to share a variety of topics ranging from how we live on the planet as equals with all life to the practicalities of learning to put hands on ourselves for energy healing, to learn to communicate with our animal family members, to realize that when we lose a loved one, we can still connect with them in the way that our intuition works most strongly. And I promise you that the more you start using your natural, intuitive, and healing abilities, the more amazed you will be at how much bigger the world really is than we think. Uh, Because when we start connecting with all life, we realize how much we're missing out on, how much humor and healing and just connection there is with all beings in the universe, including our beautiful and conscious and evolving planet. So as we get into the show each week, I like to invite you to connect directly with Fallon. Fallon is a citrine Lemurian quartz. He's an ancient healer and truth bringer currently in the shape of a crystal ball. Not his choice and certainly not mine, but he's great and you will connect with him in this hour in the way your intuition works most strongly. So whether you see pictures, you may see him there. Some people see him as a gold man or a gold light. You may hear him chat with you. He's quite the character. You may feel his energy, which is extremely powerful, or you may simply know that you're connected with him. So you're taking this hour for yourself to 
help yourself tap your own intuitive and healing abilities to be in connection with this wonderful community that Om Times has created for us, try it by connecting with Fallon here live on the show or if you're listening in the archives it still works i promise so in the way your intuition works most strongly take your attention to the top of your head and as you breathe down from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet just imagine the cares of the day washing away and your intuition and healing coming to the fore reminding you that you can release all those blockages and experience this hour of healing and connection breathing down from the top of your head down your face your shoulders your chest your hips your knees and your feet the top of your head to the bottom of your feet and now as you reverse that breathing up from the bottom of your feet to the top of your head imagine you're connecting with this healing crystal that is fallen that healing energy helping you to tap into expand your no, your own intuitive and healing abilities breathing up from your feet past your knees your hips your chest your shoulders your face and the top of your head so you may notice that you're a little bit lightheaded after this quick little meditation and that's usually uh, the connection with fallon which opens that crown chakra up really wide and just relax and enjoy the energy so today i am really thrilled to welcome author kak young and we're going to be talking about her book the art of healing with crystals but kak has written a lot of books and we're going to ask her to tell us a little bit about them and um She's also been a producer, writer, director in Hollywood for over 25 years. She has a PhD in natural health and a doctorate in naturopathy. So she's like, wow, has a lot of skills, has a lot of knowledge, and uh, really some great advice on how we can be our best selves, getting our health back growing it and of course that's been a big huge subject here in the pacific northwest where i live right now because we have had very poor air quality in the last few weeks and even though we did this last year at this time we're all thinking oh my gosh what is it coming to when it's dangerous to go outside when you can't breathe the air so we'll be talking about all kinds of things today but in particular cac's book the Art of Healing with Crystals, and uh, sharing our mutual knowledge of crystals. And here's a great, great subject today because there's so much out there about crystals. There's so much that we can learn and have fun with experimenting with them. So let's see what CAC has to say about that. CAC, welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Well, thank you, Robin, and I'd like to thank Fallon as well. It's nice to be in both of your presences. Oh, and, thank uh, you. I, I, oh, yes, and I have to share your sense of the smoke uh, because I am a survivor of the Thomas fires, and on December oh, the 5th in, two, seven, in, in 2017, uh, I had seven minutes to get out with seven oh, my pets. Gosh. And we were evacuated for seven weeks, and our home was uh, 30% burnt. So I oh, have I'm so a direct sorry. experience. Well, thank well, you. I, it's, uh, it was... it's hard, right? And we here in Seattle are complaining a lot, but we don't have any fires in Seattle. We're just surrounded by everybody's smoke. And so the big thing that we're experiencing is grief for people who are suffering, who have been directly impacted by the fires. So... We're sorry to hear that, and we're grateful that we don't have fires here in Seattle, but I live right across the ocean from one of the big ones on the Olympic Peninsula, and I've been watching it for the last couple of weeks, and it's just amazing, the power of nature, right? 
Yeah, the power and the cleansing part of nature. You know, we forget that we built in the middle of the forest, and it's it's natural habitat. Its natural cycle is to cleanse itself. And so we got in its way, and now we have to share the consequences. And certainly, I hope you all are wearing masks. I hope you've gone to the drugstore and bought masks, because that's what will keep your lungs clean. We, um, I have at least, um, my dog and I haven't even been outside much because you can't get a dog to wear a mask, but, um, it's weird. It's, and I know what people have been saying. It's like apocalyptic. I mean, last week, today it's bright and sunny. The air cleared. We got a little mist for a couple hours last night, literally mist. Seattle is one of the places in the country where we describe rain in terms of how it looks. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> it was, yes. wasn't really rain, but it was enough to get everything wet. But just it was dark and smoky and you couldn't see across the street and for days. And so we learned to appreciate nature. And I grew up in a small community where um, I had ready access to an old growth forest. So I know what it's like to be connected with nature on that level, and I think everyone is really appreciating how important that is to really, you know, pay attention to what's going on out there. I know I'm a favorite. Uh, Yellowstone National Parks Park is one of my favorite places, and some years ago they had a terrific, horrible fire, burned a huge part of the park, but. In, in the years afterwards, there were trees sprouting up everywhere, and everywhere you drove along Yellowstone, there'd be a sign that says, this area was naturally reseeded by wildfire in 1987. Yeah. <laughs> because that's yes, it. It's a cycle yes. of growth. But let's talk about your book, The Art of Healing with Crystals. So what made you start writing about crystals? Well, in the 80s, I was very privileged to work with a man called Frank Alper, and he was an IBM scientist who learned the science behind the crystal formations and the atomic power in the crystal itself. He then began to be much more metaphysical about them, and he left uh, IBM to really teach the power of crystals and how we can harness their energy to use for ourselves. And not in a woo-woo kind of way, but in a real down-to-earth, atomic, scientific way. We are built of crystal, crystals, and so is a lot of our planet. The SiO2 exactly. molecule is, uh, you know, in everything and everywhere. And we are a society probably the only society in many, many, many decades and centuries that has not used natural powers to heal themselves and to move forward. So we're, you know, we're lagging behind other uh, cultures who uh, built Stonehenge, for example. They used right. bluestone from the Presley Mountains and, and, and lugged them 200 miles with wagons across land in order to erect them for the vibrational abilities and the healing and ceremonial uh, uses that they had of Stonehenge. So um, we are not, it, it's not a new age thing. It's really an ancient That's exactly age right. thing. To be using crystals, yes. Right, exactly. Um, Fallon and I were reunited in 2009, and uh, it was after I was talking with these spiritual beings, and they were saying, your partner's coming back to you. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Because <laughs> I tend to be a little bit obnoxious at times. And um, I didn't realize my partner would be actual physical. And when I met Fallon, in a workshop where it was the only time he was ever out in public, I was like, oh my gosh, this is my partner. And one of the things we talked about after he came home, and it took a full nine months before the person he was with was willing to um, let him come over to me, we talked about what we lost as a civilization um, over the centuries and the things that we first connected with and humans have a very long history of working with crystals and herbs and as you're saying it's right it was only you know the dawn of the so-called scientific age the industrial revolution where we became a little bit more analytical about what we looked at in terms of science and kind of discarded ancient 
knowledge and experience. And that's what's coming back to us now where people like you and this and Mr. Alper were really getting in there and like, okay, what are these things? How do they work and how can we work with them? And hello, we wouldn't even have the technology that we have today if we didn't have and were able to work with crystals in a very practical sense. Well, I think that there are three things about crystals that are important. One is okay. that they breathe. They are I'm alive. Sorry. Oh, and absolutely. They vibrate. Mm -hmm. So these three things, and at the very core of all existence, ours and the crystals, is intelligence. And what's interesting about the crystals is that they do have all these qualities of breath, aliveness, and vibration, but they also have intelligence, and yet they have no mind with which to direct this intelligence. That's where we come in. That's why we partner with them. Hello, Fallon. And yeah. so when we, when we do that, we give them the direction that they don't have. And we need their purity. We need their qualities, their atomic structure in order to transmute and transport energy across them into the wavelengths out in the, in the world. We use them in a phonograph to translate the sound right. vibrations into music. We use them in our computers, in our watches, in, in our televisions. We use them all the time because they are helpers with getting energy from one place to another. So why not, if we use them for those reasons, why not would we then use them for healing for the benefit of ourselves and the world? Well, and it's true. I, I'm sort of a firm believer on trying a lot of different things to see what works. I know there were years where my animals and I had health issues and I started tapping into alternative sources. And um, I don't think I really thought of crystals beyond pretty decorations until then. And I think that a lot of people now are very open to all the different possibilities that crystals can offer them. Um, I think there are a lot of misunderstandings out there, and I also think that there are a lot of different ways that we each work with them and experience them. And that's all good, because the more we experience and work with different things, the more we learn. Hang on, we'll be right back with Kak Young and the Art of Healing with Crystals. Your conscious connection to a more mindful world. Om Times Radio. IOMFM. Change and growth are part of natural life and also part of your spiritual life. Everyone needs support and guidance, especially during life passages. Upgrade yourself with the Ohm Times Experts program. With Ohm Times Experts, you have access to the best intuitive coaches, spiritual teachers, counselors, astrologists, and oracles. Our team was carefully selected so you can trust. Find out more at experts.ohmtimes.com. Hello, I'm Lisa Berry. Join me every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time for Light on Living. A chance to see new, hear different, and feel more as I shine the spotlight on all the ways to lighten the load of life's challenges. Light on Living is your link to that new way you're looking for that new understanding that will enhance your life and that positive connection that will support your growth. So join me and you'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. I am Fidel Nshombo. I was born in a city called the Bukavu in the Congo. We were a loving family and then boom, everything that I had disappeared in a single day. People think that when you are a refugee, and they resettle you to America, and all your problems are done. They don't understand that that's the beginning of everything. I was not born a refugee. I was made one. It's time we welcome refugee families with open arms. Learn more at EmbraceRefugees.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Welcome back to the Practical Intuitive Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World. We're sharing stories and ideas and the facts about crystals with Kak Young, the author of The Art of Healing with Crystals. Wow, the author of 15 books. Gosh, when do you have time to sleep, Kak? Oh, I don't. <laughs> 
that's life, right? Well, we get excited about a topic and you and we dig deep into it. So um, I want to ask you um, about your crystal experience in the pyramids. That I can't wait to hear about. But first, we have a caller. We want to bring her online, Kim in Florida. And yes, uh, what's up yet. with you today, Kim? Hello? Are you still there? Yes. 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 How you doing? Yes. How oh, you great. doing? Great. So, what's up with you today? I was just um, wondering if you can um, tell me a little bit about my love life. What about your love life, Kim? Anything exciting coming? <laughs> yes. Awesome. Right? You know, okay, Kak, um, do you do intuitive readings as well as work with crystals? Well, not I unless do. I really know the person and sit with them. I really don't do that over the phone, but I do, yes, in person. I think that's, okay. uh, you know, my vi vibratory field. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Okay. I thought you might be interested in joining in here, but um, Kim... So yes. here's the thing. Um, my overall impression when you ask that question about your love life is that you're wanting someone, but you haven't really gotten down to defining what it is that you want in a relationship. To say that, um, for example, if I said I wanted a love relationship, for me, that would be like my animal kids. And um, and that's fine for me. But if I wanted to dig deeper into that, it would be what kind of a person do I want to share my life with? What what is their temperament? What is their sense of humor? How do they look at me? Do they look at me as someone who's there to take care of me in my old age and wash my shirts? Or somebody that I can really connect with, have a conversation with and feel respected and loved? And my overall impression I, I is look you're looking for love, but you haven't narrowed down exactly what you really want. Why is that? I do. I have narrowed it down. Awesome. I have okay, tell it, us. Yeah. Um, well, I'm looking for that my lifetime significant other. Let's make that one, you know, a little clearer. Maybe I should have asked that. Um, and, I mean, I want someone that, has, that makes me laugh, that has total respect, that – um, it is loyal that that awesome. um, cares for me as much as that I care for them, and we're equal, and we're we're just like we just have that communication connection, and yeah, I think I've narrowed it down. Male or female? Male. Okay, awesome. In your area? My my area of what? Where you live? Oh, Tampa. Right. My idea of a relationship is that I'm in Seattle and he's in New York. <laughs> so I had plenty you of want those. somebody. I'm not really looking for one of those. In my you area. want somebody right there in the Tampa area. Well, I mean, I don't want to be, you know, bossy, but I mean, it, it would be wonderful. That's know? awesome. I've had a lot of, I've had a lot of relationships. My ex-husband, he's from Tampa and I'm from New York. And there's been a few others before that um, that, yeah, I just would prefer. I have, you know, three kids, and they're older, but I would like to, you know, stay here. And I don't mind traveling, but, you know. But I would you want somebody in your anything. area. That's awesome. Can I make a suggestion? I think it would be a little bit more funner. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. yeah um, one of my books is called 21 Days to the Love of Your Life. And you take awesome. three weeks out of your life and you work a process which is internal and it helps you clarify exactly what you want in a person. Because when you do that, then you send out into the universe a very clear picture of what you want so the universe can say, yes, it's kind of like ordering a pizza. If you don't know what you want on the pizza, then they're going to bring you a surprise and you're probably not going to be happy. But if you sit down and figure out what you want on your pizza, just like what you want in a mate, then the universe can say okay and give it to you so i suggest you get 21 days to the love of your life do the process work the 21 days and then you will be able to attract the perfect mate okay and you said the name of it was 21 days to to the love of, the your, love life. of your life yes 
Mm -hmm. Right, and her name is K-A-C Young. So the other thing that I would add to that, Kim, is um, I think you're doing a really good job of reaching out and looking and holding that prospect in front of you. But the overall feeling of looking for our love is one thing, and the other th part of it is the energy of connection. And when you release that connection and, and just say, I'm open to that experience of the universe, because if the universe were sentient, which I believe all things are, what the universe wants is for you to be the best that you can be. And if that's attracting a love interest to you, awesome, that's great, because that's what you want, and that's where, you, where your interest is going. Let the energy, relax the energy of that. So it's like flinging your arms wide and letting the energy go and relaxing into it as opposed to wanting so hard that we can close ourselves off. So if you're asking me what I see for the, for the love, what I see is you opening up your energy field a little bit longer, like taking a deep breath and just allowing yourself to relax into the experience. Go out and meet people, have fun. And let let the relationship develop as a friend relationship because there's more than one person out there that your loving heart can be connected to. Don't hold that back. Let it go and relax into enjoying it as opposed to hanging on really tight to the desire to have a connection. That's what I see in your energy field. So try that and call us back and let us know how that's working for you. Does that make sense? Yeah, I've been kind of doing that already. I'm not really out Good. there looking. I'm just out there having fun. Keep at it. Let it go. Release it. Anything. And go out there and have fun. One of the places that I've enjoyed meeting people, obvious, which seems really weird, is uh, little meetups where you're just out there meeting a whole bunch of people, men and women having interests in common. And uh, I'm not personally interested in dating, but I have met a lot of new friends that way. And it's just a really, yeah. I've noticed even recently, just a really lighthearted way to meet people without that tension of dating. So you might try that. Yeah, I have. And I really don't really date too much either. Just whatever comes that might, that might be nice, I'll go for it. If it doesn't, that's fine. I did meet somebody that I'm kind of seeing right now. Um, and... Um, it's I'm feeling like a friendship. A little bit faster. Well, yeah, it feels like a friendship, and I see, you know, maybe it evolving in six months. So okay, let nice us know, know how that works you. for you. Keep in touch, I will. and thanks Thank for calling. Thank you so much, ladies. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. So we're back with – I'm sorry? Okay. Josette? Hi, it's Robin. Hi. Hi, Robin. Hi, thanks for calling in. CAC Young is with us today. I hear you have a question for CAC, so I tell do, us what I it like, is. Thank you, first of all, for sharing your gift. It's, it's such a great time to, to be able to speak. Can to you both. speak up a little? Sure. I said um, thank you for sharing your gift and, and being available uh, for us. And my question is about I'm an empath. And I work a lot on stage. I have a lot of people around me. And I tend to bring um, my quartz and my um, amethysts with me to help kind of protect my energy field. I have a tendency to get everybody's energy thrown at me. Can mm. Tax suggest some good crystals that I can carry with me that would really just protect my field from I'm, I'm an open-hearted, I'm a performer, so when I get on stage, I'm totally open-hearted so I can share my gift, but that also tends to kind of leave me open for everybody else's stuff. Well, yeah, I mean, there's there's two answers I have for you. One is that when you do that, always uh, surround yourself with a blue light. And if you want energies to come in, make it a dotted blue light around you. And if you don't want the energies to come in, then make it a solid blue light. And in, and what I would suggest that you carry would be two things. One is kyanite, which is a beautiful sort of greenish stone. 
and that's the stone of the healer. And the other one would be black tourmaline because that will ground you. That will give you the solidity, and it will also absorb any potential negative or insecure energies around you that could come in. So those are the two that I would suggest that you use. Fantastic. That's yeah. all I needed to know. Josette, you might also go online or if you have any crystal books like um, pick, that have lots of pictures in them like the Judy Hall books, take a look at crystals that really reach out to you. I know a lot of okay. people like black tourmaline. It's never particularly worked for me, but it's okay. one of the black stones that you could look at for that. My favorite is columbite, which is kind of hard to find. But uh, the other thing I would say to you is um, amethyst is a very soft crystal, and mm-hmm. um, I found that it can easily shatter in tense situations, and so I, I don't actually use it in my healing practice. One amethyst light crystal that I use is called Auralite. It's A-U-R-A-L-I-T-E. It's mined only in Canada. It's a form of amethyst with which has a bunch of grounding crystals in it too, like hematite. So it's really solid and grounding. And I think you might find something like that will help you expand as you know, on stage and really, you know, express your feelings, but also add that extra layer of, you know, protection where you feel safe and contained within your energy field. And the other thing, too, is looking at really creating a good solid energy boundary around you so that you can still express yourself within that field, but you're not taking in all of the energy from the people around you. So... Those are actually Fantastic. specific techniques that you can use to shore up your energy boundaries, so to speak. Wonderful. So I'll I'll give it a shot is a really tonight. good one. I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead. Good. I said I'll give it a shot tonight. Uh, Thank I, you so yes, much. I was and just going to suggest do... that shungite is good. Yep, yep that's another good I one have, too. You know, I it's somebody somebody just gave me a gift of shungite, a, a shungite pyramid this weekend. So I'm excited there to, you go. Uh, to bring that with me. There it is. All right, thank Go you. Go play with them. Part of the, the Thomas fire here, and I just wanted to share my sympathy with the uh, air because we all know, at least those of us in Southern California who were part of the Thomas fire, it's, it's not fun. So I'm sending you definite well wishes for that. Thank you. Well, thank you from thank me, you. and I'm sure thank you from Robin and Fallon, too. Yeah. It is it is yeah. awesome. The whole fire thing is a really tough thing. Um, I I uh, appreciate your calling in, Josette. And call back in the future and, and let us know. And um, I just did two weeks of Facebook Lives at the Humanity Healing page where we were doing questions and answers and playing with crystals. So crystals are our favorite Ooh. subject. So it's fun to have CAC on today and join us uh, at other shows. So, and let us know how those crystals and those techniques work for you. Will do. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks for calling in. All right. So CAC, tell us about the pyramids, mm-hmm. your experience with crystals. I am so curious. Well, it, it's, I mean, the story is, is really an amazing one. It started out at a gem and mineral show in uh, Santa Monica. I was looking for crystals, and the lady stopped and said, uh, I need to give you some crystals. And I said, you do? She said, yes. Uh, are you going <laughs> cool. to travel soon? And I said, yes, I'm going to Egypt. And she said, I have three clusters for you, and I want you to do something with them that you feel called to do. So I said, okay, thank you. And yeah, really. I wrapped them all up, and I, and it, it started to – I said, okay, so I'm taking these for sure. Now what else shall I do? whole – uh, reaction in my crystal collection because then many of them wanted to come. I ended That's up taking right. a whole uh-huh. pouch full of them and I got like a little jewelry case that had different slots. I mean, it was all a procedure. Back then, I could take the extra weight. I mean, now I don't think I could take as many crystals and it would probably set off all the alarms. But right. I took my crystals 
And we had, I was going with um, Patricia Michelle, who is a psychic from Cincinnati, and she had a whole group going, and I was a friend of hers, so I was joining them. And she had arranged a metaphysical tour of Egypt. We started at the bottom of the Nile and sailed up the Nile at, at each chakra point, because all the temples were built at chakra points up the Nile. And so we would do rituals and and various different procedures to cleanse each chakra within each temple or holy site. When we got to Cairo, we had special permission to visit inside the king's chamber, not once but twice, once with a group of people. I mean, you get up in the middle of the night and you go there at 3.30 in the morning, 4 o'clock, because it becomes so hot during the day so we crawled through the little narrow passages and i lugged all my crystals and took them up there and they liked it they really had they really felt good there because it was primarily used for water storage and as a battery source uh not a burial chamber so the crystals resonated Mm -hmm. with the quartz that was already in the walls of the pyramids that was number one later we came back and we had the pyramid all to ourselves and that's where i was able to do a crystal ceremony it was an initiation really i left one of the clusters that betty green had given me and i left one of the clusters down a grate in the king's chamber just off where the sarcophagus is and we prayed on that and we said okay we will be able to connect with you forever and ever And then I was able to um, borrow a spoon from the dining room of our hotel, and I dug a an area underneath the left paw of the sphinx and in that area i placed the second cluster and that's what i had it's what i left uh, under the sphinx and at that time um this was in the the 80s about 86 and uh there was less guards and less problems I was gonna say, the so guide you, was you weren't getting arrested <laughs> No, no, the guide was, you know, very helpful, and he knew that we were on a spiritual and metaphysical course, mm-hmm. so he allowed that. So I planted it there. I, I still think it's there. I dug it deep enough. So, um, you know, unless the winds of time have blown it away. And then the third one I kept. And so I have the crystal cluster, which I mentioned in my book, um, The Art of Healing with Crystals, and I mention it and have a have a drawing of it. That's what I connect with to that particular lay point, to that power grid in the world, and that connection has helped me a lot. I also have uh, crystals that I charge on that cluster so that it picks up the vibration of the King's Chamber, Giza, the pyramid, the ley line, and all the water beneath it. It was, like I said, used as a power source in the ancient world, and we can pick up that same vibration. So I send that out as much as I can. It was an extraordinary experience, extremely spiritual. We had entities visit us and support us there. And as I said, left behind two crystal clusters that I believe are still there. I mean, I don't know why they wouldn't be. And, um, and, and that story, I collected gemstones as I went through the chakra points up the Nile. And I collected gemstones just kind of like, oh, because they were pretty. And then I had them put together in a necklace in 14 karat gold. And that has become my healing ne- necklace. It oh, that's just awesome. It has the vibration. Yeah, it has the vibration of of clean chakras, and it has just maintained itself for, uh, you know, 30 years. I, I just love it. it. All of these things just came into being, and, and I didn't judge anything. I just went straight for what they were telling me to do. And I, I loved that experience because it taught me so much about power, about connection, and about the ancient world. That's awesome. I think we're into a break here. And uh, hang on, we'll be right back with Kak Young and the Art of Healing with Crystals. Conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site. 
but a spiritual dating site with a purpose to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free. AscendingHearts.com Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Om Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going On? My passion is sifting through information, research, and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers, and researchers pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics, and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here, and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness, and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday, and together we can discover what's really going on. Today we decided to walk to school. The light counted. 15, 14... 31? I mean, 13? We took, took a left on Carroll Street. Danny's smart, but he gets distracted. He realized he forgot his homework. I hope he doesn't have another bad day at school. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. That's why there's understood.org, a free resource for the parents of the one in five kids with learning and attention issues. Go from misunderstanding to understood.org. Brought to you by Understood and the Ad Council. Welcome back to the Practical Intuitive Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World. It's Robin Fritz, and we're sharing the hour with Kak Young, The Art of Healing with Crystals. Now, um, I still remember as a little girl, Kak, seeing a, what now I know as a quartz cluster in a gift shop at the Oregon coast. And, you know, so many people these days seem to me to be struggling to open up, not just intellectually or emotionally or spiritually, but just to kind of take the blinkers off that society and culture put on us and just really be open to what's out there in the world, what, you know, what we can connect with and how we can grow ourselves intuitively and spiritually in one way, I think, but just learning about the world. And um, crystals are one of those things. I mean, they're around, they're interesting. There are a lot of people that have, you know, crazy ideas about all kinds of things. But, you know, the reality of a crystal is we see them working in our computers, so we can see them doing other things. So when you're working with crystals in, and you got interested in them, if someone were to come to you and to say, well, you know, how do I get interested in crystals or what it, what's in it for me? How would you respond to that? Well, I would say that there is an enormous power in the atomic structure in the science behind a crystal. And so I think what we have to do is put aside any fear of the occult or fear of right. it being something strange because every other culture before us used crystals and gemstones for healing purposes. They recognized their vibrational value and the, their structural value. So we use things in electronics. We use them in everything. Uh, and and that can help us heal. It can help lift our vibration out of sickness and dis-ease into wellness and harmony. That's what we're all looking for. It can help us in our mind, clear our minds and soothe us. It can help us in our body, adjusting and balancing. And it can help us in our emotions to heal them and keep them at an even keel. So when we tune into crystals, we're not giving away our power. We're using them as an exchange, as something to bounce off of and to utilize for our own good. That's a pretty good answer. Thank you. And when you when you work with clients, are there particular crystals that you work with? 
I do. I have a set of healing crystals that I've collected for a lot of years, and I've been able to really watch miracles when people allow the crystal energy to help heal them. I've had a, a very tough client once who was a wife abuser, and he uh, was just ready to go into a rage at any moment. He had a restraining order against him, and people feared him. And I worked with him, and I it took us a few months to really shift that energy, to lodge it out of him because it was so deep and went back not just to his childhood but many, many lifetimes before. And one day when we were working, I really felt the dark energy lift, and he was able to cure himself of whatever this was, uh, call it a demon, an entity, a dark energy that possessed him. He was able to release that, and in time, he was able to present himself to the court and back to his wife, and he went on to have a happy marriage and a good life. But he had to do the work with the crystals helping him, and I was just simply the facilitator. But it was him and the crystal energy who really surrendered to each other. And that's pretty awesome. And for those who are listening, I didn't really um, give you a chance to talk a little bit more about what you do with your in your work. But was that um, when you were working as a hypnotherapist? Well, you know, one has to have a licensure for something, and in hypnotherapy. Yeah, in hypnotherapy, it gave me a chance to work with mind, body, and soul and give it a definition so that people could understand it. But what I do is energy work. That's what I Mm -hmm. specialize in, whether I'm working with essential oils, Bach flowers, crystals, the runes, any of the things uh, that I use are tools. And I come from a very practical background. I was in television. I was a producer and a director. So I come from a very disciplined background. Uh, You know, this is not something that I take lightly. I take it as important to myself as water is to the body. This is energetic influence around me has to be present or I'm not who I am. And what I do is use that to facilitate healing in other people. It's not about me. It's about them. And I will use whatever modality they are comfortable with and speaks to them. And that's, I suppose, where my intuition comes in and in the intake I ask them a lot of questions and make sure that they are in tune with what I may present to them. And that's really awesome, and I appreciate you saying that because there are a lot of people who are out there in the world and they get caught up in the ego of what they've learned as doctors or whatever it is, and they're forgetting that the ultimate goal is their patient, their client, and how they're going to going to move forward on their own for their own mind, body, and spirit healing. So I appreciate that you say that you say that. Well, I think I, the duty of a of a healer is to first listen, and you exactly. listen with your heart. You listen with your intuition, with your instincts, and you listen with the body of knowledge that you have amassed so that you can pull out that thing that they may resonate with. And then if that it isn't working, you go to another one. Yeah, you choose. It's like an artist. That's why I say this is the art of healing with crystals. Some may work for some people, others may not. And the idea is to blend the canvas and to make the picture according to what the person is. I'm painting their portrait, not they mine. And I think that's my responsibility as a, as a, you know, as a healer because I don't serve our country in the military, but I have to serve our country and our people in some way. So I do it with the fields of energy healing. Uh, and, and that is awesome, and, and it's you're adding a light to the world, which is important. Now, when we're back talking about crystals and finding the crystals, and, and we you know had a call or what crystal will work with me, one of the things I like to do, and I'd like to share what you like to do, one of the things I like to do is go see crystals in person. I have a favorite shop that I go to here in Seattle. 
And um, some, and I like to look in books and see, you know, read read about different crystals and just appreciate how beautiful they are as as art pieces, as beings in themselves, and of course, of, of ancient intelligence coming forward and spending time with us. But I would say to people. If you're interested in crystals that work for you, go out and explore a particular crystal. Go to a crystal shop if you can, if you can't go online, but explore the different crystals and see, you know, what it is that appeals to you. I know that I bought crystals that I didn't know anything about simply by walking down a table at a crystal show and just oh, that one looks really cool. I want that one and I want that one. And finding out that the crystal dealer was laughing because I was there right as the as the show opened and the two crystals I chose, she had packed to take to Hawaii with her and instead went, no, these are needed by somebody in Seattle. <laughs> and the, one of the first people walking in the room was me and I went for both of them. So I would tell people to go and be attracted to, See what a crystal you're attracted to. If you can afford it, take it home and experiment with it and kind of put aside what the books say about it and find out what your personal experience is with that crystal. For example, I have a carnelian that's traditionally considered a root chakra crystal. But for me and my clients, it tends to work as a heart chakra crystal. So, you know. There's a point at which you put put the books away and get down in and experience them as they are and how they and you can relate to each other. So, how would you suggest? Well, people find uh, precisely their crystals? that. What I do is, as I get very practical with this, and I say, set aside an afternoon, pick three or four shops in your area, and go see each one of them. Don't make any decisions. But you have to hold the crystal in your right hand and in your left hand. And see, the ones that attract you will probably, I mean, beauty is a healer in and of itself. So if the beauty is speaking to you, feel it, test it in your hand, you know, make some notes, take a little a pad with you, make some notes, and then uh, experiment in a few different shops. You need to get away, you need to go to the next shop, you need to check them out, especially if you're a newbie to crystals. You don't want to just fall for the first uh, per person. I always think of them as a who, so I'll, you know, you don't want to fall for the first person crystal that you meet and then at the go have a cup of tea and then at the end of your shopping spree sit down and go back through your mind and recall which ones pop into your mind and then go purchase those well that's taking more time than i do but that's also a great way of doing it i like to just go and grab what appeals to me but you're right you know it's it's a serious quest and it's and they're living beings and they have things to say and do for us. I remember never, I don't know if you've ever worked with black amethyst. I didn't even know black amethyst existed until I saw it at a show. But I had my crystal friend round up her pieces of black amethyst, which apparently she had, and I brought one home. It was just, that was the one I wanted. And I've been fascinated when clients have come over and then my attention is drawn to it and it's like, hey, I want to work with her. And I remember handing this piece of black amethyst to a client and I'm watching it pull these energy threads of attachment to her dead mother just out and dissipate them. And I'm like, wow, fascinating stuff. So I guess the answer to working with crystals is to be open, right? Go find what works for you. Play with them. Go find what works for you. Get to yeah, know. Them. And don't rush to don't rush to judgment. I mean, I've gone to crystal shows, and I've learned by experience uh, set a budget. You know, you don't want to go there and be uh, enamored with everybody. Use your credit card. Then you've got shipping charges of all the things you bought, and then you, you know, you get home and you think, oh, my gosh, what have I done? So I think that because it's overwhelming, the, Ge the Gem and Minerals show in Tucson, Arizona, is just probably one of the biggest experiences of your life. It's going to a different planet, and there you yeah, I'd like to go there sometime. 
Oh, my gosh. Yes, indeed. And, you know, wear comfortable shoes, number one. And number two, uh, don't buy what you can't carry. That's what I say because you, right. <laughs> unless you're, you know, a multimillionaire and can, can uh, you know, choose and buy things, you'll end up with things that you'll uh, that will not resonate the same at home as they did there because of your just excitement level. So it's, right. it's tempering yourself. You know, it's tempering right. yourself. And, Have but fun with crystals. But it's an exciting thing to Sure, and the energy that you will get is you've got to take your vitamins when you're in with crystals because the energy is like zing, 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 zing. That's awesome. Keck, we're almost out of time. Um, it's been fun talking crystals with you. Come back and talk with us some more, but tell people how to find you and how to find your book. Thank you. Okay, well, the book is on Amazon. It's called The Art of Healing with Crystals. And you can get it on Amazon. Uh, You also can find me at my website. It's Kak Young, and that's spelled K-A-C or Kitchen Apple Charlie, (laughs) young.com. And I have a lot of things that I teach and share and do, and uh, all in the energetic and metaphysical arena. I'm also creating a school called the, uh, the Art of Healing Academy, and that will be happening over the next year or so. We've already got a feng shui practitioner class right now happening so awesome. it's very Great. exciting and yeah i hope to be the center of energetic healing by 2020 sounds awesome cac thank you for joining us today and take care so thank you, Robin, everyone you, too. You, you are so welcome and um, everyone thank you for joining us today and as we wind down the hour this week i want to tell you that next week september 3rd will be off for the holiday and then it's full blower into fall and the end of the year we're hoping that the smoke clears all over the united states so we can all get out there and enjoy the fall season but upcoming shows we're going to be talking about Oh, the difference between intuition and common sense. If Is there a difference? We're going to be talking about various ways of energy healing. It's all coming up here in the fall, so keep in touch. You can find me and my work at robinfritz.com, personal and business intuition, mediumship, animal communication, space clearing, past life regression, between life regression oh my gosh a whole bunch of things including soul progression hearing so close you down at the end of the hour cross your hands on your heart breathe in healthy positive energy and we will see you back here in two weeks take care and thanks for joining us goodbye